When we get home, I make hot chocolate. It mostly sticks to the bottom of the mugs, but still tastes good. We choose our favourite dance scenes from the film and try to recreate them. Amit is so good at stringing different moves together that I end up just watching him. When the rain stops, we rush out to get food. We even heat eat to the rhythm of the rain now. The next morning, I lie in bed listening to a rickshaw bell tinkling. As it gets louder and fades away down the street, a quieter noise takes over. The drip drip of water from a drain pipe somewhere outside my window. Inside the apartment, it is silent. My bed sheet rustles as I push it away and swing my feet down to the floor. My bare feet patter on the hard tiles as I walk to Dad's bedroom. His bed sheet is still smooth and untouched. Before I can check it to see if Amit is awake, the intercom buzzes. Relief washes over me and I feel so silly about worrying why Dad was held up for a few days. I peep in the sitting room to make sure there are no empty food containers lying around, then brush my hair away from my face. I run to the hall and press the intercom buzzer. You're late, I laugh, so late. Who is this, a man answers, but it's not my dad. I feel my heart begin to thump. It's Lola, I answer. This is Mr. Dewan. Is your father in? He's not here right now. He's on a work trip, I answer. The man at the other end seems immediately more chatty. Okay, he's been away. Okay, can you tell him Mr. Dewan called? I work for Mr. Nilsson, the landlord for this building. When is he due back? Today, I tell him, as soon as he is back. Okay, Amit is waiting in the hall. He looks confused. What was that, Dad? It didn't sound like him. I think it was someone who works for the landlord. That's what he said. Mr. Berg? Why did he come here? Not Mr. Berg, our new landlord. Amit stands very still. And you said Dad will be back today? Maybe even this morning. Amit st starts singing. This morning, this morning, he'll be back. This morning dancing his way to the kitchen. I don't feel hungry. I go to sit on my bed. I wonder what Bella is doing now. She said something about family coming to stay. It feels like I could be a thousand miles away from her. There won't be any school for weeks. If I wish hard enough, I wonder if a phone will suddenly appear on my bed. I put one foot on the smooth marble, then stop. I message Bella on my laptop. She will want to switch the video on. Then I know Amit will walk by and somehow Bella will find out that Dad's not here. I don't want her to know that we are here alone, doing everything for ourselves. Instead, I pick up my book. I want to be somewhere else for a while. My mouth feels dry, but later I manage to eat some breakfast. I want to play cricket with Nish, says Amit. Nish is a friend from his old school. I thought you said he wasn't around in the holidays. Who do you hang out with at your new school, I ask? I told you, no one yet. I think for a moment, I want us to stick together, just until Dad is back with the car. We could go bowling, I suggest. Bowling's way more fun than cricket. Yes, says Amit. Amit doesn't seem to have heard the last bit. Cricket is way more, way more fun than pretty much anything, according to him. I check the pile of money next to the microwave. There's not as much as I thought. In the drawer under the TV is an emergency fund. If I put it all together, then we probably have enough to go bowling and get dinner too, if we need to. I'm not used to checking how much money we have. I normally just ask Dad for it. The bowling alley is crowded with all the other kids who've just finished school for the holidays. There's a sort of party atmosphere which Amit plugs into. It's not like he needs extra energy. What I find most annoying is that Amit is better than me at bowling, even though he can barely lift the ball I choose. He insists on using one the same weight and somehow propels it in a smooth straight line towards the pins every time. Strike! Amit punches the air, then turns to grin at me. I can't help grinning back, especially at his mouth and lips, as his mouth and lips have turned bright blue from the ice drink. It's a colour almost as unnatural as my green school shirt skirt. On our way home, it starts to rain super hard. The rickshaw pulls up outside our building and we shout to the guard so he can open the gate before we step into the downpour. 
We run to the main doors, through the lobby and up the stairs. Neither of us wants to wait for the lift. And it bangs on the front door. When no one comes, I hunt for the keys, rain dripping from my hair and the end of my nose. I open up. Inside it's dark and quiet. No one is home. I'm going to change, says Amit quietly, and disappears to his room. I go to my room too. I need to think. I count on my fingers. Dad has been gone for four days. I wish there was someone in, in my family I could call. They all moved far away when I was little. Dad said they didn't approve of him marrying Mum, and if they didn't approve of her, then he didn't approve of them. It would be very helpful now, though, if anyone had approved of each other. Then I would have some relatives I could call, like a normal person. Who else might know what to do? School is shut until after summer. I've been to Dad's factory a couple of times, but it's miles away in a suburb. I don't even know where. Plus, why would Dad go there and not here? My thoughts circle back to Bella. I decide to send her a quick message just to say hi. When she replies, then maybe I can tell her what's going on. Bella doesn't re doesn't message me straight back. I check my emails. Dad doesn't like computers. He is more of a face-to-face -face person, so I don't expect a message from him. But you never know. There is nothing. I close my laptop and wait.